Okay. Let's do that. Uh, so we we were uh, saying that um, so the um, uh, classical decomposition are not uh, such as moving averages and uh, um, the type of moving average are not uh, uh, widely used. Uh, by the office of statistics agencies. Mm -hmm. So they have uh, their own decomposition procedures, which are used for seasonal adjustments. So we have like new methods to use. This is uh, X11, this X11 um, uh, is the first one. Uh, and then, uh, um, Basically, you specify the X11 here uh, in the model function, but the model is named like X13 Arima 6, and it's equal for the, uh, both methods. So the first method is X11, the second method is 6. Okay, so then you use 6 here instead of X11. So basically, this is the first uh, with uh, U.S. retail employment, and you can see uh, that you use the model and then call uh, the components and then uh, make a plot to see the different components. This is the, the composition using X11, and you can see the trend, the seasonal and the irregular um, trend. Basically, this this type of method, the trend cycle, in this type of method, the trend cycle has captured the sudden fall in data due to um, 2007, 2008. So about here. And uh, caused by the global financial crisis, uh, better than any other of the other two methods which um, are the SPL and the six. Okay, because we had the moving averages, various types. Um, so you can choose different uh, settings like two days, three days, um, etc. And then you have these three methods, the SPL, the X11, and the six. So in this case, the X11 did better. Um, so it's it's um, uh, has been able to uh, identify uh, this this overall this this main uh, changes due to current circumstances. Um, so then you plot it. You can see uh, as, as the other ones that we did the last time, the, the grayish things is the original, and then the blue um, is the uh, seasonal adjustment, and the other one is the trend. You can see the seasonal adjustment, and the, so the trend and the seasonal adjustment all the way around. <laughs> okay. So if we do the sub the GGG sub series, we can see those things. And within you can see the sub series, they are monthly for each year. And so you can see December is making so uh, um month within the uh, the, the 90s, uh, which reach the highest values, so you can note that this is the, uh, uh, is showing itself up very clearly. Uh, while the others are like replicating, like the, the, the main panel, which is like little statues within, within the month. While the six methods, 
uh, this is the seasonal extraction within Arima time series, uh, developed by the Bank of Spain, and uses the same so model and then the function, but then we specify that we are using the uh, method. Now, this is uh, use USAID employment, about uh, USAID employment. So I don't know if you can spot any differences. Um, basically, to spot some differences, you might need to, to open a window and um, restrict the view to a specified, uh, specified uh, temporal um, time frame. Okay, so this is all. Exercises, here is your repo, uh, and then I've put down some, some extra information for the box cut transformation. That we already done with the defeat engineering book. Okay, so just to remind ourselves, the box talk transformation uses a, 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 a estimation procedure, okay, which is um, applied before or you, you make the model. So, so before you do the transformation, then you apply the model. In, in, in the case of the, the book, they were talking about existing regression, but uh, basically, the estimation procedure uh, recommended that both predictors should be used in an inverse scale. I don't know if you remind all the discussion we had, of course. And then uh, basically, the, the formula is this. What's happened is this. So, uh, box dark transformation we used to estimate as an estimation of the transformation and intended as a transformation of a model outcome. I really like this, this, uh, this sentence. So the box box procedure originally intended as a transformation of a model outcome. And it uses a maximum likelihood estimation to estimate the transformation parameter lambda, lambda uh, as in this equation. So basically, we set a lambda with this uh, method that we found out, this Guerrero. And so um, we set a lambda, and then we use it in the, inside the transformation. Uh, so then th this is the, the first exercise to find an appropriate box transformation to stabilize the virus. <laughs> Mm -hmm. no, I'm not. Yeah. Okay, so one 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 comment, you know, for for the future uh, groups that are going to be passing through, is that in this case, because we are dealing with a time series and we have the component of auto regression, uh, the box cost transformation is used mainly to uh, uniform the variance of the time series throughout time. Okay. In a tabular data set, you usually use the box Cox transformation or a transformation to normalize, you know, your mm -hmm. distribution. Okay, so here uh, the goal is a little bit different. In the time yeah. series, okay, because we have the auto re regression uh, uh, assumption. Okay, for example, the preceding values, you know, affect future values. Uh, something that is not, you know, uh, assumed in a tabular data set, you know, without any any time. So what happens is that the box Cox or even the log, a log transform, what you are trying to do is uniform, the variance throughout the, uh -huh. the time series. Okay, so that's basically the difference. And also remember, the box cost transformation only works well when all the values are positive, okay? Uh -huh. When you have negative values or even zero values, the box cost will have a little bit of problem, okay? Accommodating those, those values. 
So sometimes you need to do a log transformation, okay, in that case. And what happens is that the log transformation has a function called log 1p. So it, it adds one, you know, to the value to get those zero values to one and it's their negative values turn them positives, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can use that instead of the box code transformation. But that's one of the caveats that you have to be careful that the box transformation only works well for positive, only positive values, okay? Cool. That's my comment. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure if you like to, to just, what, what I did is just went through the, the, the data and I might have some comparisons within uh, different options to, to, to calculate the, the lambda. So basically here with this package, FTP3, we use features. Okay, to, to and, and then feature get rare. Or, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, move it forward and then, then we go back. We can do it with forecast, for example and using box crops lambda method Guerrero. Yeah, so it, it, it um, pulls out a new lambda. I want to, 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 uh, to show you that uh, this lambda is, I, I can uh, like set uh, a threshold if I want like, lower or but I set it to zero and it releases this this value 0 0.7 okay while the other one this um features here yeah, I don't specify anything and the lambda is no point nine okay if I uh, in here specify like greater than 0 0.7, it releases 0 0.9. Just to so a quick look. So when I uh, auto plot the results, uh, they are exactly the same. The only things that this Changes are this, this, uh, the, the y axis. So here it goes from 500 to 800, and here is, is like different yeah, scale. There you go. Then I'll show you uh, the last thing is you can do it with tidy models. Step box. Here I've used the lambda from forecast. But I didn't run it because I didn't put tidy models in the in the repo. But then I made a comparison uh, with the original data and uh, the one with forecast. Okay, so as you can see, original data lambda made with forecast the method Guerrero. Yeah. <laughs> So then you can see at least, oh, sorry, at least in the, when, you model, when you make the model, you can see that the model changes a bit because you see the um, efficient transformation. Yeah, what, what you can see in those uh, graphs is that in the original data, you have a big range in the scale, right? Between... Huh? almost 9,000 and 4,000. When you apply the, the box Cox transformation, then the scale, because it reduces the scale, uh -huh. then your variance is going to be a little more uniform. Okay. okay. That, is the, that, that is the transformation. It's, it's kind of, you know, try co to compress that scale in order so that the variation of the, you know, uh, the, the variance doesn't change that much. Okay, during the time series. So as you can see, you mm -hmm. got from a range from 4,000 to 9,000, 
which is a big range, to something between 500 and 900. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's the that that that's what the 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 box cox you know uh, really does for time series. Okay. So uh, the the other two that I think I don't know what the if you would like to show them uh, maybe uh, I would uh, uh, um, and then uh, it's some. Um, then I, I, I leave you the floor. I'll show you the things and then I leave you the floor. Basically, the Excel then can maybe I'm just data. Uh, then ask for SQL and then to choose a seasonal window. And then this can be a bit of help understanding these things. And then, uh, so then compare the results with seeds. And X11. Okay. So basically, if I've chosen this window, so a time player grade 25, and you can see this. Um, here are the sub series with the window, and here is the season without the window. Then, okay, if the first SPL decomposition with a window time period greater than 75, you use this model, yes, with the so basically median just data set made of time, year month, and then a vector volume. For the gas. So I fitted the year month to be greater uh, than the year 1975. And then apply the model, the SPL model, on the, uh, on the response variable, which is the volume of gas. Okay, so this is the decomposition Canadian gas window. Then uh, name it, uh, so apply the function compute and auto plot. You see, SPL decomposition from 75. You see, as seen a change it, then steady remains as it changes, then increasing. And you can see the pool so without the window, the 60, a little change here. So I've started from here. A greater increase. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> then uh, uh, comparison with X11. Uh, and uh, a window from 1905. And this time you use uh, X Pinarima seat with method X11 component. And then we, you can see that it's more like wiggling the trend compared to this one here. Same thing, uh, method six, uh, greater than 25, similar to STM. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, my, com my power is going up, so this <laughs> is lag. What do you think? Uh, it's all uh, I did. So if you like, I stop sharing or and I leave you the floor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that that's good. You know. Uh, you yeah. We we uh, in time series as in any uh, uh, exploratory data analysis that you do, uh, you need to uh, experiment. 
okay, and try to uh, apply different transformations, uh, you know, different visualizations to get more information about the behavior of those uh, of those points. Uh, I just wanted to share uh, because it's already two thirty, uh, Federica, and I have to leave up uh, uh, five minutes before. Okay. So uh, let me share my screen. I just want to also uh, uh, record uh, the, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? I'm okay. with you. Yeah. I can see you. Okay, so uh, there's another package uh, that is called Time TK. Okay, this one, Time TK, and uh, the 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 benefit is that you don't have to work with tables. Okay, you can work with uh, regular tables or data frames. So, for example, if we uh, you know uh, choose uh, the the tobacco tobacco volume. Uh, production, okay? So because tobacco is already a table, I have to change it to a table, right? You know, to make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have here the the quarter, the quarter volume of tobacco units and the tobacco unit itself. So there's a nifty uh, function in TinyTK called box underscore cox underscore vec. And that uh -huh. does basically a similar uh, function as the as the features, okay, and it does the Guerrero and it also does the logic, the 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 the, the logic, that it it does it does an internal optimization of what the the box cogs eventually is going to be. So if we apply this, okay, to our uh, table, it says that the lambda value that that it was optimized, the lambda value was optimized for 0 0.7099, which is similar to the one that you were mentioning in the forecast. So what I did was that I included that, you know, that uh, column into the in, into the, the, data, the data frame, right? So I have the original uh, values and I have also the transform values, right? And what I do is that instead of using autoplot with TimeTK, TimeTK already has a function called Plot time series, okay. So you don't you you know you don't need to uh, you know do and anything else. Just plot time series, the date and the and the value, and you get this uh, nice plot, okay, for the original values. Uh, if you want to compare, then you can plot with the transform values, the tobacco box cox, okay, and this is the transform values. As you can see. The time series, the seasonality and the trend doesn't change. What it changes is the scale, okay? The, the, the scale, the range of, of the numbers. And that's what we want because that's a technique to try to minimize that, uh, you know, uniformity, uh, you know, her, her stochasticity, okay? Uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, the assumption of uniform variance. So, but it has, an excellent function because when you do your forecast with these transform values, those values are not the original values, okay? They are transformed. So eventually when you do a forecast, you're going to have to inverse, right? Do an inversion of those transform values to the original value. So there's another function here that does that, okay? It inverse, the, the the transform values to get into the original scale, to original scale, and it's called box cox in IMV vec. So, to give you an example of how does that work, you have to you know you have to store the lambda, right? Because the lambda is the parameter that's going to give you the inversion. So because I already stored it, right? Uh, lambda is here. Okay, lambda is here, right? Points, point 0.7099, ta, ta, ta. So I input that into that, that function and it gives me uh, 
the original values. Okay, so with time TK, not only do I plot my time series, I transform my time series and also can invert, you know, those numbers for, you know, for forecasting uh, purposes. Okay. So uh, I, I really like that that uh, that 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 package, the the ta ta time TK. It makes it easier, and you don't have to you know worry about the the format of the data frame. You work with uh, regular 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 tables there. Okay. Okay. So basically, that's what I have. The rest, you know, is uh, uh, th there was another thing, but maybe uh, we can we can. We can explore it in the next chapter, in chapter four. It's about that, uh, the, what is called the ANSET uh, data set, uh, the, the, the passengers uh, traffic between different cities in Australia. Uh, one of the things that you have to be aware is that there's a dip in that uh, data set. Okay, I know, I'm going to show it right now. Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, there's a dip in a certain period of, uh, of, of weeks because this is a week, uh, week interval, uh, time interval by weeks. So there's a dip there. And when you look at the definition of that data set, what it says is that that dip is caused because there was a pilot strike at that time. Okay. So you have to see how you're going to deal with that. Because that's an anomaly, really. Usually, uh, you know, the traffic uh, in in this, you know, in between two cities, between Melbourne or Sydney or any city, it, they're going to have some traffic. They're going to have zero. So uh, you have to uh, get creative in terms of if you're going to do an imputation, if you're going to do a transformation, how it's going to affect it. Because remember that Box Cox uh, is very uh, sensitive to, to zeros. Okay, you know, it tries to convert it to, to a negative value and that's not, that's not allowed. So you have to, you know, get creative there. So one of the things that I have seen is that, you know, there was a, that there was an imputation, you know, those values in terms that if, what if, if the strike didn't happen? If, there, if they had a strike and then you will see a seasonality, you know, uh, pretty typical of the rest of the time series. But you have to address that. Okay, because it's going to it's going to throw you off. Remember, we're talking about regressions here. So outliers uh, affect a lot the coefficients of the of the regression model. So you you have to deal with them. Okay, in a in you know in a in a rational and scientific way. Okay, so that that's that's what I have about that that data set, the ANSET, and you will see it when you transform the ANSET. You'll see that there's a little bit of uh, the lambda is kind of high, okay, because of that of, of that uh, of that zero. Okay, so uh, basically that's a... that's it. <laughs> I not... Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I have a question. If you had to choose a different dog for that um, data set, what would you choose? Uh, you mean the window? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the window. Uh, depending on how many, how much data do I have? Because re remember, remember, in time series, uh, if you're going to forecast a month, okay, a month of data, for example, month of data, you need at least about, you know, at least a year, a year, you know, before that month. Why? Because if you use ARIMA, if you use a, the ARIMA algorithm, the RIMA uses lags, and the lags they're going to shorten, okay? They're going to shorten your observations. So usually, what you need is, for example, if you're if you're going to forecast a month, you need at least a year. If you're going to forecast a year, you at least an, at least you need five, six, seven years of of of, mm -hmm. of data, okay? Mm -hmm. Because some algorithms like ARIMA, they shorten because of the lags. They shorten. The, your observations, okay? Mm -hmm. So in this case, what I will try to do is try to use the whole, the whole uh, uh, time series, the whole, you know, the, the, uh. the, the whole uh, 
uh, uh, range of time, but then in that particular you know instance where there's zero traffic and it cannot be, it doesn't outlier. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is kind of an imputation. In other words, uh -huh. what if there was no okay. strike? So I can continue, you know, those values. Okay, but I have mm -hmm. to try different imputations to see which is, which are the ones that are more more rational. Mm -hmm. uh, there because there, there are different you know kinds of imputation for for time series. You can do interpolation. You can do min max. All that. Okay, and I, I could compare also, for example, in time series, there's a, a lot of uh, you know. People that are looking are working in the real world, uh, they have to see how they treat the pandemic. Okay, those two years that we have, you know, reduced economic output, reduced traffic, you know, everything in lockdown, all that, they have to see how you deal with that. Because sometimes it's relevant, sometimes it's not. Okay, depending on what is your past before the pandemic and your future after the pandemic. If they match, then you can do some imputation. If they don't, then the pandemic will be a factor uh, to consider because it changed the way, you know, your your time series behaves, okay? Oh. Okay. So uh, no, no, nothing is written in stone here. You know, you have to experiment. You have to, you know, justify this. I did this, you know, because I learned this, you know, about the strike and everything. So, yeah, okay. So I have to document. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, okay, Federica. Uh, uh, the next uh, Friday, I'm not going to be available. Okay, because uh, I'm on I'm on vacation. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we're going to meet uh, the next one. Okay, which is going to be. Let me check my calendar. Okay, we, this is 27. We were so, so supposed to meet February 3rd and I'm going to be available, but then we'll come back on the 10th, February 10th, okay? okay. And I'm going to be talking about uh, chapter four. Uh, chapter four is uh, time series features, okay? Which precisely uh, the function that gives you the lambda uh, you know, by the Guerrero method, that, that's the, that's the, uh, we're going to go in deep because uh, the, uh, in the package, the FFP, FPP3 package of uh, Hinman, uh, he uses features uh, for that. But that function gives you a lot more features than just, you know, the box cox. Okay. So we're going to go deep in that, you know. This is the, that chapter is the feature engineering, you know, of the, for, for the time series. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, we don't have any any volunteers for chapter five right now. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you yeah. can do it, uh, great. Yeah. I hope that Andres, you know, can join because I don't know if Abdul <laughs> is going to be, you know, is going to be available. But uh, uh, we'll we'll see. Okay. We'll take it from there. Thank you. Okay. So. Bye. Have a great weekend. So I'll see you. Remember, February tenth, February third. Uh, I'm, I'm away. <laughs> okay. Have a have a great weekend. Take care. <laughs>